In this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between the cervical spine nerve root pathway and also the lumbar spine and relate it to disc pathology and what nerve root they could contact. The cervical spine is almost easier to understand compared to the lumbar spine because within this area we've got seven cervical vertebra but we've got eight cervical nerve roots. And what that means is, for instance, if I said C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so this is C5 nerve here and this is C5 vertebra, so the nerve is above the level of the vertebra. So basically, so less C6 vertebra, the C6 nerve will exit above that level. And then when you get down to C7 and T1, so between that level, the C8 nerve root will now exit, which means that T1, T2, the nerve root will be below. Okay, so when I come onto the lumbar, the nerve root's going to be below. But in the cervical spine, the nerve root will be above. So if you have a disc prolapse between the level of C4 and C5, then it will only contact the exiting nerve root of C5 unless it's a central disc and it could be affecting the spinal cord. So it's quite simplistic in some ways to understand that. So, you know, if you've got C5 dermatome, myotome pain, then more than likely the level is going to be between C4 and C5. In a lumbar spine, it's a little bit different because the spinal cord ends around the L1 and then it becomes what's known as the corda equina, which is like the tail of a horse. And if I remove, let's say this is L4 and I remove this, okay? So this will be the L4 nerve root that exits. And if I'm, going to, I'm just going to just turn this around and just show you this area. So this is a disc prolapse. So this is a, what they call like a PID, like a prolapse intervertebral disc or herniated disc. And you can see just there, that, that disc bulge, if you like, is contacting the nerve root of L4. So you're going to get L4 symptoms. But strangely, you don't tend to get L4 symptoms, even though it's an L4 nerve root, because if you look a little closer, you can see that where the disc is bulging, it's actually contacting the nerve below. So it's actually known as the traversing L5 nerve root. So even though it's an L4, L5 disc and it's an L4, L5 disc prolapse, you'd think it'd actually contact the L4 nerve root, but actually you've got pain along this nerve root, so you're going to get L5 symptoms. So typically in the cervical spine it's a lot easier to almost diagnose, but not so easy in the lumbar. And more often than not, it's normally the L5, S1 disc, that's the problem, and you'd think it'd be affecting the L5 nerve root, but actually, more commonly, it contacts the traversing S1 nerve root. And you can see exactly, just recap again here, because it's important that you would learn this, because the disc here, it can contact the nerve root that comes out. You know, if a disc prolapse was so large, it's more than likely going to contact the nerve root that exits and also the traversing nerve root. So you're going to get a varied symptoms of an L4 and L5 dermatonal pain. Okay, so, you know, it, it's all fascinating with regards to the nerve root, but from this talk, you can see that the cervical spine is almost relatively straightforward as compared to the nerve root of the lumbar spine. I hope you enjoyed the talk.